How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Boy Lie Hobby Time. Today I'm making a windmill monster, which means I need a lot of little bricks. To make my job easier, I'm going to be mass producing them on this hot wire table. I made the bricks out of these sheets of XPS foam, which are offcuts from a previous project. My first step was to slice all the sheets into sticks. I set the width of the cut, which will be the width of each brick, and I ran all the sheets through together till I had a nice bundle of extra long XPS foam french fries. After that, I set the length of the bricks and began running small bundles through together till I realized that small bundles are a waste of time. So I ran the whole large bundle through all at once, which meant that the bricks were not perfect, but perfection is not the goal. Character is the goal, and that will be the running theme of this video. In the end, I had a nice little collection of pink foam bricks, but they lacked character. In order to get these little bad boys to look even more imperfect, I chucked them in a container with some rocks that I gathered from my grandma's garden, and I shook them semi-aggressively. I dumped the roughed up bricks in a new pile and I repeated the process till all the bricks had been conditioned. As you can see here, after the shaking, the brick on the right has slightly more character because it went through the discomfort. It also has a slightly better sense of humor. After gathering up and shaking the rest of the little bricks, I had no more need of the rocks, so I returned them to their natural habitat. You may be wondering where I got the idea for this diorama, and that would be from a guy named Quinn. He sent me a message describing a dream that he had where I made a diorama of Don Quixote fighting a windmill that was actually a monster. I thought that was a great idea, so I decided to make his dream a reality, with a few subtle changes here and there. Thank you very much for the inspiration, Quinn. For the support structure of the windmill, I used the base from an old coffee brewer and that round box that I used to shake up the bricks. I didn't line up the two parts so the windmill would have a little more personality, like it was lurching forward toward the approaching men. I also used my X-Acto knife to cut out a little doorway. I was recently sent some samples of super glue from Laser Creation World to test out called Super Glue Man. They sent me three different viscosities which I was excited to test out on this project. I used the thick one to bind the cardboard to the coffee brewer base and then I tested the medium stuff on some foam, which was the real test for me. I'm really happy with how little odor there is from this glue, but even better is that it's foam safe. Using the newfound strength of Super Glue Man, I began attaching all the foam pieces to the cardboard, starting with the door frame and some vertical posts around the base, followed by some horizontal beams as well. With some borders in place, it was time to start filling in all of the gaps on the first level with the bricks. Along with the imperfections of the bricks, I wanted to add some additional character by aligning them imperfectly as well. After the first section of bricks was in place, it was time to add the second floor balcony, so I broke out my box of balsa wood and basswood strips. I wanted the balcony to wrap almost fully around the windmill with a break in the middle just above the door. I started by adding main supports, spaced around evenly, made from large balsa wood, and then connected them with the walkways themselves. After running the first board between each main support, I put the rest of the boards in place already glued together, which I scratched up with a wire brush to draw out some wood grain and create edges for the paint to catch onto, which will lead to more visual interest, or what some might call character. After the walkway sections were all in place, I glued on the second half of the tower and I drilled some holes to mount the thin scarecrow arms later on. The scarecrow arms were one of Quinn's suggestions. I ran a styrene tube through the whole tower for better structural support. For the gap in the wraparound deck above the door, I wanted the broken edges to subtly resemble teeth or claws. I then blocked out the shape of the eyes and I filled in the second section of bricks which extended all the way to the top of the tower. This process took a lot longer than I'm making it appear and I was putting bricks in place for nearly an hour, but after they were all finally in place, it was time to build the roof. I cut some more balsa to fit together as joists and I added a central post going up vertically to the height that all of the diagonal beams will meet at. I then threw on those diagonal beams and I glued them together at the top of the central post. To ensure that the windmill blades were nice and secure, I drilled a hole all the way through that central post and I reinforced it with some additional cross beams. After that, I filled in the roof and I covered the connection points between each roof section with some bent styrene pieces, followed by a six-sided foam finial, which I hand carved with lots of character, meaning imperfection. 
After that, I made the windmill blades from some basswood, because it's a little more sturdy than balsa wood, and I based it on some designs that I saw online. As you can see, because of the forward lean of the tower, the blades run into the balcony, which actually works in my favor, giving me another point of contact to secure the blades to. I finished up the final construction details, including some supports around the walkway. I made the door, which is the teeth of the monster. I also added some wooden eyebrows above the windows, and I made those scarecrow arms, which I mentioned one minute and 40 seconds ago. With the construction phase done, I disassembled the fragile bits for painting, but before I painted, to protect the little foam bricks from any unwanted character development, I covered them in a layer of Mod Podge and paint. The Mod Podge will create the protective shell, and the paint will help me see where I've applied it. Pretty much the whole time I was working hard to get this windmill done, my 3D printer was working hard itself to print out the protagonists of this diorama. Here we have Pancho Sanza and Don Coyote better known as El Hombre de la Macha. I took the heroes and the windmill outside for a coat of primer, but before painting I realized I wanted to have the landscape established, so I placed everything on a base to help me visualize it. I knew I wanted the men to be charging up a small hill toward the windmill mimic, so after cutting up three layers of XPS foam, I glued them together with some super glue man, and after marking out how much space I needed for the windmill at the top, I began carving out the shape of the hill. On the front side of the hill, to add more visual interest, or as some might say, to build some character, I added a little cliff face. I switched from a hot wire to a utility knife to get more realistic rock texture. Once I had the texture that I was happy with, I glued the foam to the wooden base and I broke out my old hobby mat, because it's terrain paste time, and that stuff adds lots of character. I mixed up the classic plaster, water, paint, and Mod Podge blend, and I added a little extra water this time preserve the nice texture that I had carved into the rocky cliff face. If you make it too thick, all of that would go away. After that had been mixed thoroughly, I brushed it over all of the pink surfaces and I left it to dry. I don't recommend using a hairdryer to dry plaster, because it can cause the plaster to crack. Once dry, I painted Mod Podge in the shape of a pathway leading up the hill, and then I sprinkled on some fine sand which I sealed with isopropyl alcohol and watered down white glue. Next, I squeezed on some Woodland Scenic Static Tack, brushed that around, and then I applied the static grass to the rest of the hillside, saving the excess static grass for later. And it was at this point that I decided to glue the windmill in place, because I wanted to paint them all together. So I left that to dry, and I moved on to painting the heroes. I started the painting with Poncho, and while I paint these guys, I'd like to roll the names of my wonderful patrons and tell you my little spin on this classic story. Poncho is a naive but genuinely nice guy, born during an unusually rainy month, earning him his name. When Don Coyote came to town in search of a traveling companion with promises of adventure, Poncho was enamored by Don's fanciful words and agreed to join him on his quest, half out of curiosity and half out of pity. At first, Poncho was fairly certain that Don was crazy, but played along because he enjoyed the friendship and found the game to be good fun. After a few hours of riding, Don and Poncho rode up on a solitary windmill atop a small hill when Don stopped cold in his tracks. There it is, Ponch, said Don. That monster is responsible for the fall of many a poor soul, and I will not stand for it any longer. The time has come for us to slay the beast. Poncho, being a little concerned as to what was about to happen, felt uneasy about trespassing but decided he'd better stay close, being more afraid that Don would accuse him of being a party pooper should he not continue to play along. To Poncho's dismay, as they approached the old windmill, which to this point had appeared as any other windmill began to move. Not just the blades, which wouldn't be unusual, but the bricks as well. The door opened from the middle and became two rows of sharp, jagged wooden teeth and large arms shot out from the windmill's sides. Poncho couldn't believe what he was seeing. Was the windmill indeed coming to life and preparing to consume them? Or was whatever illness that had caused Don to go crazy contagious and now infecting his mind as well? Either way, Poncho was terrified and wished that he had stayed at home. After the base colors were on the windmill and the landscape, I temporarily assembled it and I doused the whole thing in a burnt umber oil wash. While the wash was still wet, 
I removed it from all the raised areas and the places I didn't want it using some cotton buds and paper towel. When the oil wash was finally dry, I sprinkled on some foliage of a different hue and I gave the windmill a final dusting of light tan. Then I painted the sides of the diorama with black 4.0 and that was the painting done. I then put away my old hobby mat and it was time for final assembly. I glued the windmill blades in place followed by our little friends. Super Glue Man also sent some accelerator which helped cure the glue almost instantly. After both of our little friends had been glued in place, I called it good. Before moving on to my final shots, I'd like to give a huge shout out to my friend Neil from Real Terrain Hobbies and this awesome box of his. This isn't sponsored, I just genuinely like Neil and his channel and this product. If you're looking to outfit a friend or a loved one with crafting essentials for Christmas, consider sending them one of these boxes. I will put a link in the description where you can find them. That is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Huge shout out as always to my patrons. You guys are the best. Another shout out to Quinn for the inspiration for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Have a great week, everyone. I'll see you next time.